Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Friday, September the 29th. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled Simplicity Brings Joy. Our scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3, and it reads, Truly, I say to you, unless you repent, change, turn about, and become like little children, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven at all. And of course, that's from the Amplified Translation. Let's get into this. Christians have available to them the abundant quality of life that comes from God who is not full of fear, stress, worry, anxiety, or depression. He is not impatient or in a hurry. He takes time to enjoy his creation, and he wants us to do the same. Unfortunately, I don't really think that the majority of people are enjoying their lives. When you ask them how they are, their response is nearly always busy. I'm just so busy with work, the kids, church, and school activities. We live in a stressful world that seems to be getting more stressful with each passing year. People are hurrying everywhere. They are rude, short-tempered, and it is easy to see that many people are frustrated and under pressure. They're experiencing financial stress, marital stress, and the stress of raising children in today's world. I have a thought for you to consider. Simplicity brings joy, but complication blocks it. Matthew 18, 3, the scripture I read at the very beginning, says that God wants us to approach life with simple childlike faith. He wants us to grow up in our behavior, but remain childlike in our attitude toward him concerning trust and dependence. He wants us to know that we are his precious little ones, his children. We show faith in him when we come to him this way which allows him to care for us. We cannot have peace and enjoy life without childlike faith. When you begin to live your life with all the simplicity of a child, it will change your whole outlook in a most amazing way. Start looking for ways that you complicate things and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you simplicity in those areas. He lives in you and although he is extraordinarily powerful, he is also extraordinarily simple. He will teach you simplicity if you truly wish to learn. And this is one of those areas that can be really difficult for us to comply with. We may thrive on all the things that we're doing because we feel that it validates who we are. We get recognition for those things. We are honored for those things that we do. We have a competitive heart and spirit. We're making all these plans for our kids. You know, we want them to have that college resume that looks or that that resume that looks fantastic when we want them to get into the best schools. And of course, what parent doesn't want that for their child? But how about we ask the Lord what his will is for those things? That's what the world does. What does God want you to do with that simplicity and being able to say no and let go of the many, 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 many things that fill our lives, that make us feel important, that make us feel like we're doing something, but all that striving, we've been talking about it. That's in the flesh. We have to trust the Lord and let him order our steps. He will lead us. He will show us. Not that we're to sit back and do nothing. Of course not. We have to say, Lord, what is it that you've made me for? For what purpose? He doesn't want us to be in poverty. What if, I've always said it. I say it all the time. Jeremiah 29, 11, his plans are to prosper, to not harm, and to give you hope in a future. Stir up the gifts inside. Let me see what it is I can do as an adult to not only have an income for myself, my family, but to have a, an income that is a blessing to have an income that allows me to have everything I need because it's given to us by the Lord, but also to be a blessing to other people. You know, it's funny because um, 
college degrees. There was a, a little, it's a scheme too. It's a, it's a big scheme that was done back in the 50s or the 60s where they really started downing the trades um, and telling everybody, if you aren't going to college and you don't have a college degree, you're an idiot. And they still, t they still speak that. You have these people who are getting college educated, but they're ba basically, they're, be they're being college indoctrinated. Not that I have anything against education. I am a consummate learner and student, but not everybody needs to have a college degree. And it was a big scam because they wanted money for the universities and whatever else they do with it. I don't know. But you have that college educated somebody who's got degrees out the wazoo, who's not earning an income because he's not hireable because he doesn't have practical skill, you know, the philosophy guy. And he's in his house filled up with his puffed up pride. <laughs> and you have the plumber or the electrician coming out and cutting off his electricity because he can't pay his bills. And the electrician that he looks down on as being somebody who's a trade worker uh, is bringing home six figures. So you see what I'm saying? We have to approach life with childlike faith to trust God to lead us in the right direction and not create what we think is the perfect life. Okay. The pursuit of those things is the pursuit of the world. We have to pursue God with passion and let him stir up within you those desires, the dreams that we have that never go away. Those kids, there's so many people I know, they said from the time I was a child, uh, I wanted to be a pilot. That's a gift from the Lord. And they pursue, they grow, they become a pilot. That's a gift from the Lord. He's pursuing the dream that's been in him. Those people who've wanted to be doctors or nurses or teachers, those things are placed inside them early on and help asking the Lord to help because there's quite a few kids who have no idea. They don't know what because they've been turned in so many directions. They've never had time to actually sit and focus. Whew. Our children have been given gifts and we need to approach life with that childlike faith and trust that believes God will lead us in the right direction. He will lead us. And if it's his will, it's his bill. Okay. God is so good. God is so good. And he knows how to show us what needs to happen. So pray. If you're one of those people that has one of those schedules that is crazy, you have no time to rest. You're running yourself into the ground and stress is having an impact on your health. It's really time to get on your face and ask the Lord. Get on your face and ask the Lord, what do I need to let go of? You're not destroying your child's future. God has his hand on your child's future. God has his hand on your future. You just need to tap in to what it is he wants you to do to lead you into his blessing and his prosperity that he wants you to have. Let's pray. Oh, wait, our trust in him today. Okay, our trust in him today is take the time to observe a child and notice how they approach things with such simplicity. Approach God with that same kind of innocence and complete dependence. Trust him to take care of all your needs so that you can enjoy your life. Now let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. You are faithful and you are good. And you are able to lead us, Father. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that are willing to obey. For those, Lord, whose lives are packed with activities and stress and uncertainty, Father, help them to recognize their need to just lay it all at your feet and then lead them. Tell them with clarity what it is they need to let go of so that time opens up in their life Time for you, time for them to rest, and then be able to hear your voice with greater clarity. We thank you, Father, for the steps of the righteous are ordered by you. Help us to approach life with that childlike, simple faith and dependence. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. I've got a busy pack day. I'm hoping to get a uh, shop with me in this weekend. 
um, Dollar Tree shop with me. There's some things I do need to pick up, but I my schedule is so packed today. I'm not sure when I'm going to be driving a lot, <clears throat> going to a couple of different cities. I've got a, a walk through for my daughter's wedding in November, my oldest daughter. Um, and so we're going to walk through the venue today to look at it. And, and then um, I'm taking lunch uh, and having a visit with my granddaughter, Eleanor's other grandmother and Jennifer. I'm going to visit with her today. And then I'm going to get home in time to go on a date night with my hubby. We were going to go see The Blind, which is the life story of Phil Robertson of the Duck Dynasty family. He's the head of that family. And I just saw a text message come in from my hubby saying it's sold out for today and tomorrow. This is going to be a wonderful movie. I'm a little disappointed. I wanted to see it like today. We were planning to go see it today. But there are no, it's all sold out. So it's, that should tell you right there. It's probably an amazing biographic movie. So if you get a chance to go see The Blind, uh, The Blind, of course, is a reference to duck hunting. <laughs> they create a blind they hide behind when they're duck hunting. And, you know, Duck Dynasty, they love it. But it's also to the fact that Phil Robertson was blind be not physically blind, spiritually blind before he came to Christ. And so that's a wonderful title for that movie. But I'm hoping that we get a chance to see it whew, Sunday, maybe, hopefully. So, but you guys get, if you get a chance, go see it yourselves. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. God bless you and bye until next time.